All right, let's get started. Uh, welcome all to the Williston Development and Review Board meeting of December 13th, 2022. My name is Pete Kelly, I'm chair of the DRB. Uh, if you are a Zoom participant, please sign in with your name on the participant toolbar. This is a hybrid meeting taking place at the police station and virtually on Zoom. All members of the board and the public can communicate in real time. Planning staff will provide Zoom instructions for public participation before we begin. All votes will be taken in this meeting will be done by roll call vote in accordance with the law. If Zoom crashes, the meeting will be continued to January 10th, 2023. Let's start the meeting by taking the roll call attendance of DRB members participating tonight. Uh, Paul Christensen. Present. John Hemmelgarn. I'm here. Scott Riley. Here. Dave Turner. Here. Nate Andrews. Here. And the chair is present. Uh, so at this point, I'll turn it over to Andrew for Zoom instructions. Uh, that'll be me this evening. Emily. Uh, so for folks in the meeting room, uh, please keep your microphone, camera, and speakers off. Uh, if you're attending on Zoom, there are several features on the toolbar. Please keep your microphone muted. Turning your camera on is optional. Use the chat for technical questions, or if you would like to speak, uh, please don't provide substantive comment in the chat. Uh, you can indicate if you'd like to speak also by pressing the raise hand button on the toolbar. Uh, captions are also available this evening uh, by clicking the dot, dot, dot button. We'll be using screen share this evening. You can optimize your view by clicking the green toolbar and choosing side-by-side -side mode. Use the toggle bar to choose um, your priority as the screen share or the videos. Lastly, if you have a bad internet connection, you can try turning off your video, closing other tabs or programs, or use your cell phone as your audio device. Click the up arrow by the microphone. Um, again, if you have any questions tonight, uh, please message Andrew, myself, or Simon in the chat. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Emily. Uh, first up is a public forum. This is an opportunity uh, for anybody participating in tonight's meeting to address the board on issues that are not on tonight's agenda. Is there anybody that would like to address the board? No? Okay, uh, let's transition into the public hearing. We've got four items tonight on the agenda, HP 23-01, uh, which is a certificate of appropriateness uh, at 23 Old Stage Road, DP 20-03.2, U-Haul at 4964 Williston Road for a master sign plan. Uh, I will be recusing myself on that, uh, on that hearing, uh, my employer, uh, built the project, uh, so there's conflict of interest. DP 23-08 is also on the agenda. Uh, that's Summit Automotive Partners, also known as Berlin City Kia, uh, for an expansion. And DP 23-09, uh, which is a subdivision uh, on Ricky Vista in the Ag Rural Zoning District. Okay, first up, HP. I believe that the, that last one is not a DP, but a preamp. I, right. think, I think you're right. That's correct. Okay, that's a preamp. Uh, it is a preamp uh, in, uh, in the agenda. Okay, so anything else, John? No. Nope. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, first up is uh, 23 Old Stage Road. Who is here representing the applicants? Uh, no, I just said no, but I'm gonna be refusing myself on this one because Andrew is a current and active client. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, Andrew and Angie, please come up to the applicant table, please. 
and state your name and address for the record. I think we know it, but. Hi, hey everybody. Andrew Conforti, 23 Old Stage, Williston. And Andrew Conforti, 23 Old Stage, Williston. Great. Welcome. Staff goes next. Yep. This is a request for a certificate of appropriateness to construct a detached garage and accessory dwelling unit. Um, this property is located in the additional review area of the village zoning district. So tonight, the DRB's focus is on the architectural design of this structure in the historic district. Everywhere else in town, a garage and ADU would be permitted solely by the zoning administrator. Uh, the main house on the property is a Greek Revival farmhouse constructed in 1840. It's seen a lot of modification over time. Um, you can see an old summer porch in this photo. Uh, the existing rear addition uh, replaced this older addition to the rear. Uh, and the photo also show, shows an old dairy barn, which is approximately the location of the new uh, garage that's being proposed. Uh, so the height of the building being proposed is 26 and a half feet, complying with our height requirements. The building footprint is just under 2,000 square feet, and the ADU floor area is just over 1,000 square feet. Uh, the materials that are being proposed, uh, staff and the hack both recommend that they comply. Standing seam metal roof, uh, James Hardy vertical siding with a board and batten appearance. Uh, windows are marked and elevate. Um, the DRB may recall that the property got a permit to replace the main house windows. Those are also marked and elevate windows. Uh, the, the new exterior doors will be wooden. Uh, the garage doors will be steel with a wood texture overlay. The lighting fixtures, a black mat, and then a portico beam at the porch matching the wooded um, doors. Uh, the garage is proposed at the rear of the property, uh, or at the rear of the main house, um, complying with the setback. This is a unique property that has three front yards, Williston Road, Old Stage Road, and Church View Drive. So it has three front yard setbacks, and this, it, this structure complies. Um, and here's some 3D models that show the size and massing of the building. It's important to note that the finishes shown in these drawings are not the final finishes in terms of the window mutton pattern, um, the siding, et cetera. Um, the HACS recommendation is that this complies as proposed um, and that modern farmhouse look, you know, emulates the old dairy barn that once stood on, on the site. The application materials also include elevations of a three car garage and a floor plan. Um, this entryway to the ADU, the roof sticks out, so it has a, about a three by eight covered porch um, as an entrance into the stairwell for the ADU. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Emily. Uh, can you go back to uh, scroll back to oh you're controlling that. No, Andrew is okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> which is a common state. And uh, so um, <laughs> could you go to the uh, to the architectural plan that was shown? Yeah, go one up from that. Yeah. Okay, so I'll start off with a question. Mm -hmm. So this looks like a um, an, an actual drawing from an architect that you hired. Yeah. Uh, but that doesn't show Ford and Patton siding. Correct. Can you explain that? Maximize our time and use of that architect. We want to do additional drawings, schematics, for cost efficiency. Okay. Okay. So you brought it to a certain point. And this then was like his original Got it. sharing. Okay. We just knew that we could change materials based on our needs. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. And also in this first drawing, he has the two over one for the windows, but we prefer the two over two. Okay. Which is in that model, the final that model that he drew up. I think the hack wanted two over two, right? Um, the hack didn't comment on the window pattern. They they felt whatever was proposed would be good. Okay. Okay. Uh as uh, as the uh, applicant, what would you like to 
um, provide that would supplement staff's report. Do you have anything to add? No? Okay, DRB members, questions, please. No questions? Just one peripheral comment. This is a lot nicer than the one that they built off of uh, South Brownell behind that house. This is a lot nicer. Oh, thank you. Okay. I don't know which one. Right, any questions? No? Okay. Um, questions from the audience or people participating in Zoom? Okay. Um, 7 Eleven, I'm going to close HP 23 Zero one. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Next up is DP twenty dash zero three point two. Are you Hall? Uh, John, you got it. This is a master sign plan amendment. So who's got this one? Uh, that's me. Take it away. Uh, so as you said, this is a master sign plan amendment for U Hall on Williston Road. Excuse, excuse me, one second. The uh, applicant's sworn in. Oh, I'm sorry. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, you can state your name. Sure. Jeff Vain, 58 Howard Street, Winchester, New Hampshire. Great. I guess I should open this hearing as well at the clock here. Yeah. 712. <laughs> well, thank you. At least I won't make it before we close the previous. Sorry, sorry. So it's a amended master sign plan. They're seeking to update the uh, the approved final plans to allow for four uh, additional wall signs. Uh, they're shown highlighted in red there. Um, they're for the sort of drive-in unload load area. Uh, and they're between 13 and a half and 23 and a half uh, square feet each. Uh, we are recommending approval uh, with findings, conclusions, and conditions as drafted. Uh, my staff report has stopped working now. So just going to talk. The, uh, the U Hall Master Sign Plan was approved uh, in August 2020 uh, with a special condition that uh, imposed by the DRB uh, that the total wall sign area not exceeds 755 square feet. Uh, these signs do add 64 square, square feet in area, uh, but it still remains below the maximum authorized by the DRB uh, at 710. Um, so, what follows um, at the end? This uh, report is uh, a recommendation for approval. Uh, one thing I would suggest is um, I didn't include the uh, condition restricting it to 755 square feet. Um, so I think for everyone's sanity, it would be good um, just to uh, report to include that. I think that's it. Great. So, have you had anything to add to that? Um, yeah, we, these were just an omission that we should have applied for uh, original. It was an error on our part. We didn't put them in. They're directional signs. They're not advertising signs, really. So they just directed the customers where to go once they enter our lot. Um, and it, it, the limit of um, square footage that we that has been presented by the board is fine with us. We don't have no intentions of adding anything in the future to this building. So, yeah, like I say, it's just an additional 64 square feet total between the four. <clears throat> Okay, thank you. Good. Any board members have any questions to ask? Or... No? 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 Nor do I. Thank you. Super. <laughs> I was just hearing it. 714. Oh, I care for one way more. Right. Was there, were there any comments from the audience? Yeah. Thank you for coming out. Okay.
Okay, thank you, John. Okay, next up. Next up is VP 23 08. Uh, who is here representing the applicant? If you'd state your name and address, please. Yep, Dan Heil, Trudell Consulting Engineer, 478. Hey, welcome. Uh, who's got this one? That's me. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. This is a request for a discretionary permit to construct a building addition, a little less than 5,000 square feet, reconfigure the parking, and do a facade renovation at 586 Marshall Ave. This property is currently developed with the car dealership and service center in two distinct areas, north and south of Marshall Ave. A third area, a vehicle display lot, is leased from an abutting property to the east. So 585 is south of Marshall Ave. It's where a small 3,000 square foot building and sales lot is located. That's currently the detail department. Uh, no changes are being proposed as part of this application on the south side. North side, where we're focusing tonight, is 586 Marshall. It's where the existing building is about 6,000 square feet. Um, it's the main dealership and service center for Kia. So this property is uh, roughly five, uh, nine, nine point five seven acres. Um, the commercial use is existing, and no change to use is proposed. It's located in the industrial zoning district west, uh, where it was subject to design review and conservation commission review. Staff is recommending approval. Um, as the DRB reviews this application and considers approval. Uh, you must also consider your limited power to correct non-conformities per Chapter 2.8, particularly as it relates to pedestrian connectivity, outdoor storage, and outdoor sales landscaping. Uh, we'll work through those in detail later on. And the DRB should remember that they can only require work that is reasonably proportional to the scale of the proposed development. This is the first time the DRB is reviewing their request. Uh, this property um, was created in 1996 and subsequently developed with car dealership with a few expansions um, since then. Uh, Conservation Commission and Historic and Architectural Advisory Committee comments are included, um, as well as public works and fire recommendations uh, with the usual limitation on fire comments. No public comment letters were received at the time of mail out, nor by this evening. Uh, so a reminder on vested rights that the DRB's uh, power to correct nonconformities is limited to required work that is reasonably proportional to the change, um, the scale of the proposed development. The uses of uh, vehicle sales and repair maintenance are allowed. Um, compliance is anticipated with dimensional standards, setbacks, height. Um, for the outdoor sales and storage, uh, the lot south of Marshall Ave um, does not comply with the landscape requirements. Today, if that lot were proposed, it would need to have uh, landscape medians, uh, no more than a rank of 24 spaces without landscape medians. The DRB must decide um, if their power to correct nonconformities extends to this side of the property, which is opposite Marshall Ave from where the changes are being proposed. Uh, similarly, for outdoor storage, um, that's also allowed. We're on a site where shown on a site plan. Um, there are two 40 foot shipping containers on the property. They're located on the far southwestern corner of the parking lot. Um, typically, outdoor storage is screened either with an extension of the building or with a fence or a landscape buffer. So again, the DRB must decide if these containers can remain as is or if they would need screening. Um, for both of those outdoor sales and storage discussions, you would need to edit conditions number three and 20, 23 and 24. Um, access and activity. So no changes to vehicular access are proposed. Um, in terms of bicycle and pedestrian access, the applicant is proposing to extend the sidewalk uh, to the main customer entrance that's highlighted in yellow in this diagram. Uh, the DRB must decide if the sidewalk should be extended along Marshall Ave 
um, between the existing sidewalks. So today, if this property were developed brand new, we require sidewalks along the entire frontage of Marshall Avenue. Balancing that nonconformity, they are connecting what's existing to the main customer entrance, but should it go all the way to that, that crosswalk? Uh, the DRB would need to edit condition number 25. Um, and in particular, note this connection would need to be within the public right of way <coughs> to avoid conflict with street trees, snow storage, etc. We are not recommending a sidewalk to the west of Marshall Ave, um, shown in this picture on the left. There's an unnamed stream that is very constraining to this property. So connecting that sidewalk wouldn't be feasible um, and it wouldn't go anywhere because the town has planned for and has that multi-use path on the south side of the road. So um, that pedestrian connection to the south provides that access and we don't see a need for it um, to the west of their driveway. Um, and Public Works is requesting um, a pedestrian crossing system, you know, the blinking lights, um, at that crossing between the main dealership and the detail department. Uh, drive throughs typically drive throughs are prohibited, prohibited in Williston. They are allowed for banks and service of heavy bulky objects. So they, they are proposing a service bay area where a customer would drive in, drop their vehicle off for servicing, and then they would bring it around to the service department. So we're recommending a finding and conclusion that vehicles are a heavy bulky object um, for that provision for a drive through um, In terms of on-site infrastructure and maintenance, um, standard conditions are included. Um, in terms of snow storage, final plans, we need to identify snow storage for the entire parcel um, and that it must drain into a, an approved stormwater system Right now, that stormwater or that snow storage area um, is between the park service parking lot and the wetland buffer, but no stormwater system has been identified. <coughs> Off street parking and loading um, compliance is anticipated here. They are overall reducing the number of parking spaces, um, and their parking count includes spaces that are used for vehicle sales storage. Whereas our parking calculations are based off of customer and employee spaces. Uh, final plans would also need to show short term and long term bicycle storage parking, as well as an end of trip facility. Uh, right now, the floor plans are showing locker rooms and bathrooms for the employees. That floor plan would need to be reconfigured to include um, a shower. Um, so overall parking complies based off of an industrial um, use calculation. Final plans we need to show end of trip and bicycle parking. Detail and mechanical screening, condition number 17 is included. Um, basically, they would need to show that rooftop and ground mounted mechanical equipment will be screened with hedges, fences, or an architectural extension of the roof parapet. Design review to have to read this application on November 15th. <coughs> Their recommendations are included. Um, I will note that following the hack review um, and up until up to today as well, the applicant has demonstrated that they can meet the sidewalk recommendation, the airlock, uh, providing an awning over the building canopy. Um, some of those changes are included in your packet. Uh, today, Dan provided revised site plans showing that they can meet. You know, all the hack recommendations uh, for airlock entryway on it. Uh, landscaping complies as proposed uh, with the buffers. They are pro providing additional landscaping to comply with the uh, nine foot type three buffer along the east side of the building. <coughs> uh, street trees compliance is anticipated. Um, there are existing street trees at that required 40 foot spaces. Final plans would be to identify species and if any of these are ash trees. Today, we wouldn't allow the planting of ash trees that are prohibited space, uh, species. So the final plans would need to include um, a maintenance replacement plan. What we're not recommending here is if all the trees are ash trees that they get 
cut down and replaced imme immediately. It can be a phasing plan, or maybe there's a few that they would want to um, treat. Um, but today we wouldn't allow new ash trees to be constructed or be planted. Um, conservation areas complies as proposed. Um, there's some habitat, core habitat on the area, however, that overlaps with the watershed health. Um, compliance is anticipated as well with watershed health. Uh, so currently there's some gravel parking area within the wetland buffer. They are removing that parking area, reseeding it, and then bringing that parking lot behind the service center into compliance. So there would be no more encroachment into the wetland buffer. Uh, for the Conservation Commission recommendations, they would need to demarcate the buffer, um, as well as include some plantings um, on the site plan. Uh, signs and public art. Um, final plans. Um, before final plans would be approved, they would need to submit a master sign plan for this property, and a condition of approval is included. Um, on December 6th, the applicant did provide photo documentation that non-conforming temporary and portable signs had been removed from the property on both sides of Marshall Avenue. Um, but there's several non-conformities for their permanent signs, internal illumination, more than one freestanding sign for point of access, some upward illumination. Uh, so this whole property would need to be brought in compliance before we would let final plans move forward for this application. Uh, lastly, impact fees would be assessed at the time of administrative permit. They are creating a new service area with about six new service bays, so there's anticipated to be some new vehicle trips associated with the service area. And outdoor lighting, uh, compliance is anticipating. Anticipated, we would need some information at final plans. Um, about the entire site lighting, including a calculation for security lighting and parking lot dimming when the business is closed. Now what follows is findings of fact, conclusions of law, conditions of approval. Uh, the very last ones are the conditions that the DRB would need to edit or delete. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Emily. Okay, Dan, uh, welcome. I would uh like to hear any comments that you have in a global nature. Sure. And then I would also like you to um uh to uh point out any proposed conditions of approval that you are concerned mm -hmm. about um mm -hmm. on conditions of approval one through 22. Mm -hmm. And then I would like your position on Proposed conditions of approval 23, 24, and 25. Yep. Okay. So um, the floor is yours. Great. Thank you. I think Emily did a great job summing it up. I really don't have too much to add. Um, it is an uh, existing automotive dealership located at 586 Marshall Lab. There's two new additions, one on the south west side of the building, and that is a reception bay where cars would drive in, drop off the car to be serviced. Um, the addition on the north is the additional service bays. There are some parking lot modifications um, around those expansions. Um, yeah, pretty much everything I've said um, is, is accurate, so I don't have too much to add there. Um, I'd be happy to hop into the conditions. Okay. Um, so starting with condition three. Uh, as Emily mentioned, I did forward revised elevations today uh, based on HAC comments. Um, uh, HAC's main comment is that they wanted permanent protection over the entrance to make the main entrance more pronounced. So I don't know if it's possible to pull up those elevations, Emily. Um, but we've worked with the architect and on providing a bump out at the main entrance, which would define the entrance more, which would provide protection um, from the elements from above, um, and just kind of make that entrance a little bit more clear. Uh, so those elevations have been revised based on that comments. 
Uh, we also provided a floor plan and there will be a interior airlock vestibule. And I think we're all set on condition three. Uh, condition 14, I'd like to be removed. Um, this is in regards to obtaining necessary sewer allocation. Uh, there is no increase in employees associated with the proposed addition. Uh, there is existing allocation. There's an existing WW permit for this parcel uh, for maximum 20 employees. And in the proposed condition, they, the owner and applicant would have no more than 20 employees on site. So I, I don't believe condition 14 would is required. I think if you read it. It yeah. says the applicant, the applicant shall obtain any necessary sewer alloc um, allocation. Okay. So if you yeah, don't I mean, need we can, it, we can you, keep it in there. If you don't need no it, I think it protects the town. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it protects the town. Um, okay. But if you don't need it. You well, either way, we, we don't need it, but we can keep it in there too. Yeah. Um, and I'm good with the other conditions through 22. Okay. Um, Condition number 23, uh, Emily brought up the existing um, parking lot on the south side of Marshall Ave, um, which is not part of this proposal, but owned by um, the same owner. There are spaces, um, there are more than 24 spaces in a row, as Emily pointed out, without uh, parking islands on site. Um, we'd request that parking islands not be required at this time. If and when that law is developed in the future, we understand it would need to be brought into compliance. Uh, there's also existing mature street trees along Marshall Lab, which do provide some screening, but um, yeah, it would be our request that those parking islands not be required at this time. Um, condition number 24, uh, we've worked with the applicant and they're in the process of removing the shipping containers. Uh, they've moved all the items into mini storage down the street and they've notified the shipping company. So those shipping containers should be off the site within um, a month or two, I think. And uh, so we'd be fine with any kind of condition of approval um, or prior to a certificate of occupancy that those uh, containers be removed, but they should be removed far before that. And then- Would you anticipate starting construction? It would be spring uh, 2022. Would you have any angst if the condition uh, were removal of those shipping containers would tie to your building permit? Yeah, we would be defined to tie that to the administrative permit. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, they should be gone within. Not occupancy, years. the permit. Yeah. The, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then condition number 25, <clears throat> I don't know if it's possible to pull up Google Earth, kind of look at the, what's going on with this sidewalk along Marshall Ave. Um, but based on hack comments, we did provide connectivity from the main entrance to the existing sidewalk uh, located at the southeast corner of the site, extending from Gardner Supply. So we are providing connectivity from our site to that sidewalk. Uh, we don't feel it's really necessary or warranted to extend that all the way to the entrance, because um, as staff notes and recommends um, that we wouldn't need to extend that further. So by extending it to the entrance, um, it's creating additional impervious surface and um, there already is pedestrian connectivity to the sidewalk. Um, and there's an existing uh, crosswalk located right by the Garner Supply entrance. I've also been working with the applicant on potentially removing that sidewalk and crosswalk at the existing entrance. Um, we understand we would need to work with DPW and um, get feedback from the board too. But by eliminating that, sidewalk and crosswalk, we would be reducing the amount of pedestrian crossings along Marshall Ave. So I think it would be a benefit to remove that since there's a crossing just to the east. Um, that's fairly close. So 
We how, would, what, how would you, how would your employees assume, you know, both sides are owned by the same, by the same company and are, and are the same company, I assume you're going to have people walking back and forth. So I talked to the applicant about that today and, you know, there, there aren't a whole lot of people walking back and forth. Um, they could still walk back and forth. They, they would just need to go down to the gardener supply crosswalk and then walk back up. So it wouldn't be as <laughs> direct. Um, but um, I think it would be better to minimize the amount of crossings along partial paths. Okay. Emily, can you slide down to see? I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time picturing where that other crosswalk that you're referring to is. It's the existing crosswalks at that stop so, lane, gardener supply and harvest. Right. Is, that, is that the name? I'm just no. trying to get a sense of where it is. Is it right behind you? Right? Yeah, it's right behind uh, going, the right. Zoom window. Or this one? Yeah, there you go. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oops. I'm just trying to get a, a sense of the full, full scale here, how far that is. Asking people to kind of go the opposite yeah, direction. Yeah, the other way. Right. They're all <laughs> going is, is, is hard. You got to go east. So. Oh, I don't know yeah. east. I don't think. Streets, uh, <laughs> there you go. All right, so it's good from point of yeah, it's better than getting hit by a car for sure. I just, uh, you know, I, I think what was implied by someone on the board was that it's all well and good to, um. Ask employees to go to that crosswalk, but they won't. No, right. They, they're not going to go that far. So, so this removal of that crosswalk is not part of this application, correct? Currently, as submitted, no. It's, it's not, not, right? So it's really kind of a moot point for discussion purposes. Well, if the board would be open to it, we could work with this board okay. member. This board member would not be open to it. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, we can we can certainly keep that there, but we would request that the sidewalk not be extended to that entrance all right so when you say to that entrance can you could you just yeah. get up and yeah, yeah and point that out I'm, I'm a bit confused here yeah. sidewalk extended oh. to that other side So what else are you to... trying to accomplish other than reduce impervious uh, services by eliminating that sidewalk? Are you trying to move the the parking well, lot? I mean, we are we are providing connectivity down to this sidewalk here. Right. Uh, there would be a proposed sidewalk here going up to the main entrance here. So we are providing connectivity here. Which sorry, which were you saying you wanted to eliminate? We were just talking about walk? potentially eliminating. Oh, just, okay. This got it. Crosswalk here. I thought you were talking about the other employees side. could drive back and forth. Um, you know, we would minimize the crossing, but if the board isn't open to that, that that's fine too. Well, no, not the board, just the, just one. Of them. Okay. Well, <laughs> no, two. You got two. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Three. The okay. staff's recommendation was extending the sidewalk here within the right of way, um, but they made the comment that. They don't recommend extending it further this way as there is the stream and the wetland on site yep. with some challenging slopes um, and it wouldn't be serving much here. Okay, so so staff, are, are you recommending orange? Yes, and that's included. That's included. Yeah, okay. that's what we're, staff is recommending and is included in one of your conditions to choose from. And that's and that's the last one. It's number 25. Number 25. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think is what they're doing. Right. Right. I got that. Okay. And is, and is the the path on the other side of Marsh Avenue that is constructed there? Is that right? That correct. That yes. exists. That exists. That's that multi purpose right. yes, exactly. all the way down yep. to right. South Farm Hill. And it is where the fuchsia line ends, where the employee entrance is, or yes. Well, that would be the main entrance. The and they would be 
are those employees that are moving back and forth occasionally using the main entrance? Um, I would need to check with the GM. I think the GM, uh, Dedrick, might be on Zoom. He was planning on being here. But, um, I am here. <laughs> so, so would employees be using the main entrance to go back and forth between the sites, or is there a separate employee entrance? Uh, the employee entrance is out front, but all my employees do park at 585 and walk across that sidewalk there. Okay. Okay, so... So, so we so, can keep the crosswalk. So that's yeah. that's, that's, <laughs> so that's, a, that's fairly active, right? Yeah. Like when you yeah I was, all, I was up for one of those flashing things. How many employees are there? Uh, 60, 64, 60 to 64. <laughs> it's more than 20. It's more than 20. Well, across, across the street, too. I have drivers that I'm talking about in the building is probably around 20, but with drivers and everybody else, uh, with recon, it's a two different buildings. So I guess that leads to one of my questions, which is the building across the street in that parking lot. Can you can you uh, go over to me more specifically what that building is used for? Detail, detailing vehicles. Detailing vehicles. So it's used all the time. Correct. There are additional employees in that building. Correct. Okay. And there are no no improvements <laughs> being made to that building. That's no, right. no. But, but that's where all of the yeah. Well, then that that certainly makes sense to keep that. I'm talking with the construction manager today, we talked about removing that, um, but um, I didn't realize that. So that certainly makes sense. I mean, I can see removing that small piece in the the back, smaller parking lot. Mm -hmm. I don't see where that does any good. But. You asked him to say his name. The person yeah. online. Dedrick Kassab. Thank you. And what's your address, please? General Manager. Your 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 address. Oh, five eighty six. Uh, my home address. My work address. Uh, work. Work is fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're you're good. No problem. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. Um. Okay, so let's go. Let's go back to the Gardner Supply intersection where the proposed uh, pedestrian crosswalk upgrades are, and and that's and that's for uh, safety at that intersection um, for general population, correct? Because because really, it's not about employees of the business. It's about people using using the pedestrian walkway and the sidewalk, and right. I think the request for the flashing beacons was at the the driveway crossing between the the detail department and the main department. The Correct. crosswalks, the Gardner Supply, are a traffic light that already have you know timing programmed into the traffic light. Yeah, the rapid flashing beacons would yeah. be at the existing entrance to this site. Um, to 586 and 585, not the Gardner Supply intersection. It would be at. Um, it would be right over here. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, because that's where I was saying that, thinking in my mind that they were needed. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Where they would be. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. DRB members, questions, please. Uh, I'm based on the discussion I'm talking. And the issue of the containers, but it's secured. Yeah. Plus my zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the signage is is uh, is conditioned in here to be uh, brought into compliance at a later date. Yep, they'll need to get a master sign yeah. plan before right. final plans can be approved. 
And that's you, your, your understanding. That yes. Yeah, for, yeah, all my questions. Okay. Um, is, there, is there currently a right of way on the um, west side um, where the town was thinking or not extending the parking lot or not extending the sidewalk because of the stream that was there? Is there currently a right of way there for the town? We we do not have uh, proposed um, access right of way along the front. There's a pretty big gully that goes through yeah. there. There's yeah. a drainage easement over there, but there's no access. Yeah. Yeah. They would tie that road through like they proposed years ago. Then they might oh, that, yeah, right. Then they may need it. But other than that, no. Okay, members of the public, any questions? Oh, yeah, one, one quick question here. Um, is this, this is the area where you were talking about adding sidewalk, is that right, through this tree? Okay. Yeah, it would be, it would be through here. It would be happy if you had to eliminate that tree. If the tree was eliminated, we would, um, yeah, we would plan something else. Yeah. That's what we had Okay, <laughs> members of the public, any questions? See no chats and no raised hands. Okay. And can I, Dan, I just want to add on those shipping containers. They are empty. The shipping container company does require a 30 day notice, and they were notified two days ago. So they will be gone in less than 30 days. So we're fine with that. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Last call. Good. 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 Yeah. Okay. I'm going to close DP 23 08 at 747. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Okay, next up, DP 23-09, uh, the Boardman pre-app for a two-law subdivision. Uh, Brian, welcome. If you would uh, say your name and address for the record, please. Brian Courier, Lori Burke Civil Associates, 13 Corporate Drive, uh, Essex Mill. I had the uh, pleasure of meeting Brian's dog on the bike path this weekend. <laughs> Very nice dog. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, staff's up next. Ah, uh, that's me. Uh, so this this is a request for pre-application review um, of the two lot subdivision at Wiki Vista uh, to create one <coughs> additional dwelling unit in the ARZD. Staff are recommending approval and allowing the project to proceed to growth management with recommendations <coughs> as drafted. Uh, just a little bit of background here. Um, it, the, the lot was created as part of the nine lot that has subdivision in 2001. Um, just to orientate you, this road here is Walker Hill Road. And this is uh, Route 2A uh, running down there. Um, so as part of that, uh, this lot was created, I'll zoom in there. Uh, and it uh, preserved uh, an area of open space for the southern part of the lot. Uh, as an agricultural and conservation easement. Um, it also uh, created a easement for the adjoining <coughs> lots uh, to have their septic systems. So that's lot four, lot five, and lot six in there. Um, and then it created a trail easement uh, along the top, the north of the uh, lot there. Uh, and then finally, 
Um, as part of that approval, uh, they did protect some class three wetlands uh, on the parcel, uh, which is in the pink there. So, <coughs> that, we didn't receive any uh, public comment. Uh, turning to the development standards for the uh, district, uh, the property has a 40 foot frontage uh, onto Ricky Vista, uh, meeting the requirement there. Uh, it is an open space development, uh, which means it needs to protect 75% of the parcel as open space. Uh, and the applicant's preliminary site plan does show that protection. Uh, the property is largely covered by conservation areas, a strategic wildlife habitat area, uh, and a view shed, and is probably subject uh, to watershed protection buffers. So during discretion at discretionary permit stage, uh, the open space will need to include those, any watershed protection buffers that are delineated, uh, and the maximum amount of those conservation areas. Uh, consistent with their ability to uh, develop the site. Um, the proposed open space that they've shown on their preliminary plan does pretty much cover the uh, agricultural easement that was protected in 2001, uh, save the small curve in Ricky Vista uh, and small sliver of land along the southern area of the existing uh, property that are not incorporated. Um, there is um, design standards for homes, new sites uh, in the ARZD. Uh, they do need to uh, designate a half acre building envelope. Uh, and the bylaws do seek to minimize visual impacts in open areas, uh, particularly where the house cannot be screened, uh, which, in, which, which does apply in this case. So in this case, it does state that the uh, property should be, uh, the eventual building should be visually absorbed into the background and no part should be outlined against the sky. Um, that is a view from, uh, from the streets uh, looking at the property and I've uh, shown approximately where it's gonna be located with the red box. Uh, you can see the existing stable uh, barn next to it. Uh, which sits uh, reasonably well against the uh, tree line. Um, so at discretionary permit stage, the applicant will need to demonstrate uh, that they have minimized visual impacts and they haven't uh, broken the skyline. Uh, WDD 31.8.9 uh, uh, does allow them to propose additional screening and absorption, re absorption measures uh, that can help with that, such as height limits, uh, screening and careful choice of materials. Uh, so we do have a recommendation uh, that they explore those and uh, propose some of them to the DLB for approval. Uh, the new and existing lots will have access onto Ricky Vista, uh, which is a residential driveway, uh, taking into account the existing property uh, and lot six of the undeveloped that has subdivision, which has a right uh, to access that uh, driveway. Um, that's a, only three potential dwelling, dwellings using it. So uh, it does comply. And we've included a recommendation uh, that they demonstrate that the uh, driveway does comply with the construction standards uh, of our bylaws. Uh, on site infrastructure, in terms of their wastewater. Uh, uh, water supply and utilities is, uh, I guess, fairly, fairly standard for an ARZD lot. Um, we have included a specific recommendation uh, via the application look, applicant looking to um, the rights of the adjoining uh, properties, uh, the adjoining lots, uh, to demonstrate whether those have been relinquished in the intervening period uh, and that the development will not preclude them. Uh, exercising that right. Uh, density is fairly simple in this case. Uh, a rough estimate indicates that they are uh, entitled to sort of up to 12 units on this parcel. They're only proposing two. Uh, and we have recommended that they include a density calculation um, as part of the discretionary permit. 
uh, landscaping in the ARZD. Um, landscape buffers typically consist of existing vegetation. Uh, chapter 23 and uh, the guidance on uh, developing new lots in the ARZD uh, do give the DRB considerable dis discretion in determining sort of the width and what type of landscape buffer will be appropriate. Uh, the guidance is really that they provide uh, ample buffers. Uh, so the, we have recommended that they do uh, provide buffers to uh, some adjoining properties uh, to the east on St George Road uh, and to the west on um, Ricky Vista. Uh, street trees, um, uh, the existing frontage does have some street trees. Uh, a, a rough estimate sort of indicates that they um, exceed the 40 foot spacing. Uh, in this case, uh, the southern part of uh, this parcel um, is actually designated as a uh, scenic view shed. Um, which you can see. Uh, here. So that's uh, Walker Hill Road running along the southern uh, part there. Uh, and this area in sort of uh, yellow is the scenic view shed. Um, so the southern part of the property uh, is designated as a scenic view shed. And uh, WDBD 26.1.2 uh, uh, does allow the DRB to waive uh, the requirement for street trees uh, to preserve the scenic vista. Uh, conservation areas. Uh, the property is subject to uh, wildlife uh, habitat designations. Uh, you can see it there, the lots ringed in red. Uh, so it overlaps onto the green, which is core habitat, and the sort of hash brown, uh, which is uh, wildlife travel corridors. Uh, and it overlaps with a uh, small cleared area there as well. Uh, the Conservation Commission did review this uh, application, as well as the standard recommendations to prepare a habitat disturbance assessment uh, and to minimise the extent of clearing with the <coughs> building lot. Uh, they have asked the applicant to investigate uh, moving the uh, proposed lot southwards uh, to reduce or ideally avoid uh, any clearing in the woodland. Uh, but the recommendation we propose does recognize that some of that area is needed for septic systems. Uh, so really it's for the, the applicant to investigate that uh, and move it far as south as they can, uh, consistent with that uh, constraint. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we do know that there are probably some wetlands uh, on the property, so we've recommended uh, delineation, uh, be prepared for discretionary permit stage. Uh, and because those uh, class three wetlands, uh, which have actually in the intervening 20 years seem to have fallen off the delineation map, um, were sort of protected uh, under the 2001 subdiv uh, subdivision. Uh, we recommended a functional assessment, which means that if they come back as class three, uh, we can actually determine whether or not they're worth protecting. Uh, they might be just stuff full of invasives, in which case uh, there's no point in protecting them. Uh, so I think that's it. Uh, so what you have is a recommendation to allow seed growth management uh, with recommendations as drafted. Okay, thank you, Simon. Hey, Brian, do you have any comments on the proposed conditions of approval? Uh, I only have one, it's probably the picky variety, but uh, 4D uh, talks about a wetland delineation uh, by a professional wetland scientist. It just mentions that it be done on the entire property. Now we know there's going to be wetlands south of uh, the current drive. We know they're to the east and likely the northeast, um, but I think we can delineate in the vicinity of the proposed development and still show that we're meeting uh, required density, still showing that we're not going to impact any wetlands while not delineating all the way into the northeast corner of the parcel that you know, is, is hundreds of feet from where we're proposing to develop. So, yeah, yeah that's it. Understood. Yep. 
Uh, DLD members, questions? So, yeah. uh, is, is there anything, do you have anything that shows where the conserved area is? Yep, the uh, site plan. It's a site, red so the hat. site plan. Is a, uh, or sorry, it's a yellow. Hat. This one. Yep. So everything that's hatched in yellow in the open space development has to go on its own parcel. Everything, everything here that is yellow. That's correct. And seventy-five percent is about a thirty-acre parcel, so that's over twenty acres. Yeah. Did uh, did did staff verify that? Uh, I. Check the calculation. Um, does appear to be correct. Yeah, and, and the map and the map the map lines are accurate. Uh, comparing it to the existing agricultural easement. Yes. Yes. Uh, the, the, yeah. conservation, the, the conserved area matches what's here. Uh, I'm not calling you along. I'm just so this was about this came before the board about 10 years ago. Okay. Um, it is based on tax maps, so we will be submitting a plat as part of, as part of discretionary. So if there is a discrepancy between now and discretionary, it would be because we're going to be looking at a survey boundary rather than a tax map. Yeah, it looks correct to me. So I would ask that the staff just take a look at that and verify it and make sure it's correct. Okay. What's the dis distance of the proposed building envelope from your manure pile at your barn? Just out of curiosity. Manure pile. Well, there's horses in that barn, right? Yeah. Where do you where do you where does the manure go every day? I am not sure. I'm not sure where it's located on site. Um, I believe Stacy uh, Barton is in the audience. If she wants to comment on uh, where the manure is stored within the barn, Stacy, or is it uh could we I see believe. Her? I believe it's typically right behind, uh, right behind the barn, um, is where I recall it to typically be. So directly behind the barn, that would give us behind the barn relative to Walker Hill Road, or behind the barn relative to St. George Road. Uh, behind it. Um, on the back side, like headed toward the back part, of the, yeah, right there. So, so you walk behind. So it's behind relative to Walker Hill. Uh, so in other words, it's yeah, it's the closest point you can have to that proposed building lot right now. What's the distance between the newer pile and that proposed building lot? Over I, would, I don't have that. I don't the reason, know. The reason I ask the question is because you can't drill wells within two hundred feet. Is it? Of a uh, manure pit, uh, manure pile. I think it's two hundred. I think that's what I dealt with when I drilled my well. Yeah, and there's there's a, a mound system just east of there. So we'll, we'll be looking at isolation distances when we apply for a state. Which okay. are, it's a yeah, so that's so, 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 we'll find so that's outside around. of the DRBs. Sure. Yeah. Just, that's uh, that's with the the state and wells and septics and all that good stuff. Uh, other, other questions? No, I'm good. Yes. So do the do the adjoining lots have septic fields on this plot? They do not. I don't believe they do. We still have to look into, there is an easement on there for them to use it, we believe. Um, when we do the plat, we'll obviously learn more once you do a deep dive in the land records. But we believe that the abutting landowners have an easement over the property for a septic system. but when those lots were developed, they got their own WW permits to put their own systems on their own lots. You know, you know it's a fairly good distance, uh, long ways to uh, run a force main. So it seemingly, uh, at this point, appears like the, the neighbors have their septic systems on their own lots. <laughs> you might want to try to get those easements removed. Right. Well, yes, again, we're, we're right, aware of the recommendations we see. We see the maps and we do exactly that. Yep, and we're aware of that situation. It's only, only question. Okay. So you were saying 2C, John? Um, yeah, the discretionary permit should show that the development will not include the adjoining lots exercising their separate easement for the great house. Uh, 
Yeah, thank you. Okay, other questions? Okay, members of the public, question. Uh, I have a quick question. Okay, if you could state your name and address for the record, please. Sure, my name is Fran Stoddard, and I'm just, I'm ma mainly wondering where can I look at these documents to just get a, I, I think I, I think I get it, but um, to have a better understanding of, of what's going on. So are they accessible online or how, how would I take a look at these documents? Uh, I'm a neighbor. Fran, the, the documents, the, a lot of the documents are available on our website um, on the DRB page. Okay. Um, if you, if you, yeah, Emily's dropped a link in the chat. Uh, Great. If you have any problems accessing them, you can always give me a call or send me an email uh, tomorrow and I can help you find them. Uh, my name is Simon Miles, M Y L E S. Okay. Uh, Great, Simon. You. Thank you. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty straightforward. Go to the town website and then make your way to um, the planning and zoning and the development review board and then meetings and tonight's date and you'll see all the information for the uh, for for everything that we're going over uh, tonight. Terrific. And it looks good and I'm not surprised and they're good neighbors and all that. So, and I, and I take it just another quick question. The two lots, the one is the existing house and right. the other lot is the new lot. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Did you get that, the address there or did she, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, other questions. Okay, doesn't look like no raised hands. Yeah, no raised yeah. hands, no messages to the chat. To okay. Speak. Okay, last chance for questions from the DRB. Brian, any final comments? I do not. Okay. All right, uh, we will close DP 23 09 at 807. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, the DRB is now going to go into deliberative session uh, at 8.08. Uh, welcome back to the Town of Wilston Development Review Board for Tuesday, December 13th, 2022. Uh, the time is 8.25. Uh, is there a motion for HP 23? Uh, well, there wouldn't be a motion. HP 22 so, yeah, um, there's not really a motion for HB 23-01. It's just a, uh, yeah, it would be red. That's right. Okay, so is there is there a motion for HB 23-01? Uh, yeah, I, Scott Riley, um, make a motion to approve uh, in the Williston Village Historic District, a certificate of appropriateness uh, in accordance with WDB Chapter 42, the Historic and Architectural Advisory Committee recommends approval, uh, as does the uh, Williston Development Review Board, a certificate of approval, certificate of appropriateness uh, for Andrew and Angel, Angel, 40, application number HP 2201 or HP 23, should be 22. 23. 23. Yeah, we're yeah. Okay, so HP 23-01 for a modern farmhouse style detached three bay garage with second level uh, auxiliary dwelling unit, ADU. Thank you, Scott. Is there a second? I'll second it. Uh, Dave seconds it. Any further discussion? Yes, uh, you, yes you will sign it. Uh, I will sign it, yes. Um, yay or nay? Paul Christensen. Yay. John Hemmelgarn. Scott. Yay. Dave Turner. Yay. Nate Andrews. Yay. Chair is a yay. 
Five in favor, one refusal. Motion carries. Uh, is there a motion for DP 20 03.2? Yes, uh, authorized by WDB 6.6. Three, I, David Turner, move the Wilson Development Review Board, having reviewed the application submitted and all accompanying materials, including the recommendations of town staff and the advisory boards required to comment on this application by the Wilson Development Bylaw, and having heard and duly considered the testimony presented at the public hearing of December 13, 2022, accept the findings of fact and conclusions of law for DP 20.03.2. An approved discretionary permit for master for a master sign plan subject to the conditions of approval above. This approval authorizes the applicant to submit final plans, obtain approval of these plans from staff, and then seek administrative sign permits, which must proceed in strict conformance with the plans in which their approval is based. We are going to add a condition number six, which states total wall signage shall not be increased above the 755 square feet. Okay, thank you, Dave. Is there a second? I'll second it. Scott seconds it. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, yay or nay? Paul? Yes. John Hamilgarn? Yay. Scott Riley? Yay. Dave Turner? Yay. Nate Andrews? Yay. Uh, the chair is has recused himself. Uh, five in favor, none opposed, one recusal. Motion carries. Uh, next up is DP 23-08. Is there a motion? Yes. As authorized by WDB 6.6.3, I, Nick Andrews, move that the Williston Development Review Board, having reviewed the application submitted and all accompanying materials, including the recommendations of the town staff and the advisory boards required to comment on this application, by the Williston Development Bylaw, and having heard and duly considered the testimony presented at the public hearing of December 13, 2022, accept the findings of fact and conclusions of law for DP 23-08, and approve this discretionary permit subject to the conditions of approval above with the following modifications. On item 23, Strike include, or oh, sorry. Uh, it's just struck in its, in its entirety. Struck in its entirety. Number 24, the shipping containers at 585 Marshall Ave shall be removed prior to administrative permit. Number 25, extend the sidewalk along Marshall Ave from the dead end sidewalk on leased sales display lot ID 07-069-012-001. To main driveway of 586 Marshall Ave, approximately 200 feet. Okay, this, thanks. Oh, sorry. This approval authorizes the applicant to file plans, obtain approval of these plans from staff, and then seek an administrative permit for the proposed development, which must proceed in strict conformance with the plans on which this approval is based. Thank you, Nate. Uh, is there a second? Second. John seconds it. Any Question. Dis any discussion? Yeah. Paul? Item. Yeah. 21 makes the crosswalk system included in this, correct? Uh, the public works requirements be satisfied with that that makes the that makes the flasher system uh, required, correct? Yeah, and condition number 22 refers to the public works and 21. 21. Yes, and 22 and 21 kind of work simultaneously. Oh, okay. That's what you're saying. That. You're talking about the, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that that was included because I didn't see this on mm -hmm. one item. Okay. That's all I needed. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, hearing none, uh, yay or nay, Paul? Yay. John? Yay. Scott? Yay. Dave? Yay. Nate? Yay. Chair is a yay. Six in favor, none opposed. Motion carries.
Is there a motion for DP 23-09? Yes, as authorized by WGD 6.6.3, I, John Hemelgarn, move that the Wilson Development Review Board, having reviewed the application submitted and all accompanying materials, including the recommendations of the town staff and the advisory boards required to comment on this application by the Wilson Development. Um, by the Wilson Development Bylaw, and having heard duly considered the testimony presented at the public hearing of December 13, 2022, accept the recommendations for BP 23-09 and authorize this application to move forward to growth management. We're going to adjust uh, recommendation 4D to read a wetland delineation for the proposed development must be prepared by a professional wetland scientist and the site plan submitted with the discretionary permit application shall show all wetlands within 50 feet of the, of the proposed new lot property boundary. If the delineation identifies class three wetlands, a functional assessment of those wetlands shall be provided. Okay, thank you, John. Is there a second? Second. Paul seconds it, any discussion? Uh, only the motion. Yeah, did you complete the motion? Did you complete the motion? I finished it at. I'm not sure I have more here. Okay. It authorizes this. I mean, I said it, it authorizes the application to move forward to growth management. Pardon me on the end. No, no, at that senior was, moment. I'm not no, there yet, but I'm there. I'm no, there. I was thinking the same thing because <laughs> right. because Nate actually did it a little different and right. so that, in that a different was, sequence. So I actually thought the same thing. That was a DP versus the. Got it. Got we, it. We, okay. We've not been on our, our best team. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was a the night. We made it hard. Yes. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion about our incompetence? <laughs> Okay, uh, yay or nay, Paul? Yay. John? Yay. Scott? Yay. Dave? Yay. Nate? Yay. Chairs are yay, six in favor, none opposed, motion carries. Okay, meeting minutes of November 22nd, 2022. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes? I didn't, I, I, didn't, I, did not, I was just, I just recognized that fact because you said yeah. it, it was not in our package. That's on me. Ah, welcome to the sweet. We're gonna have to wait on that. Um, so let's talk about that though. Yeah. Because um there's yeah. there's quite a delay between now and the next meeting. I think that might push over the 45 days. It might that might push the boundaries of the 45 days. So um we are they available to follow up? Yes. Um, the other option is that, um, uh, is that, uh, we could do Tentative this by, approval. by unanimous consent. Um, and if, uh, if everybody's in agreement after having adequate time to review it, then we could approve this by unanimous consent. But I don't think it's in the spirit of, of just throwing it, throwing it on the screen. So how and, about, so I think Pete, that's a good idea. How about if you email them to everybody and then everybody emails back to you consent, either consent or not. Right. And then I don't think we need, I don't think you gotta have a voice vote on this, do you? No. I don't think so either. No, unanimous consent can, is basically just, I approve by email. So one, and then, one, let's do that. so if everybody's in agreement, then, um, then it's unanimous consent. So but everybody would need to respond. So everybody would need to respond. So, uh, yeah. Well, since we're all here for the first time, and I don't know how long. So, um, so staff can staff can email the minutes out. Okay, do that. Um, you know, tonight, tomorrow, whatever, um, and and just um, reply to all your consent. Um, your approval, if assuming you approve it. And if you notice anything, just throw your all, just have a little word what you what you notify. You know? Well, that is not unanimous consent, and we no, no, have to just say at that point, then people have to go back and forth. Back and forth. Now you can't go back and forth in that form. 
Really? No. You can't no, go back. That gets, it can't get kicked, kicked down the road until January then, right? Or we call a special meeting. Okay. It's odd because sometimes so Friday, Friday yeah. unanimous consent if that works. If not, then we go to unanimous. And the reason why you can't do it by email is because you can't have a uh, discussion debate right. and uh, in real time. Question Does the 45 days start from the meeting or from the time that we go to vote on the time the meeting was closed? But the it's hearing. the closing of the hearing. So that's so that's what the, we would have to approve the minutes within. 45 days of the 22nd. It, it's just it's just not fair to uh to applicants, regardless of whether we're pushing the boundaries of the 45. It's just not fair to the applicants and who are um looking to advance whatever initiative they're working on. And so um I'm I'm sorry, growth and growth management. So um so email the minutes out. Um, we'll try for unanimous consent. If we don't, then we get unanimous consent. Then we'll take it from there. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Is there any other business to bring forth to the board tonight? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Sure. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all. Thank you.